So today, we're taking quadratics written in standard form and getting them into factored form. And in case you don't know, factored form looks something like this. Here's an example. x plus 8 times x plus 1, something like this. And it's called factored form because you have two things being multiplied together, this and this. And when you multiply two things together, each of them are called factors, all right? But when we have a quadratic written in standard form, we have it written out like this. And trying to figure out how to get it into this form is a little tricky. But here's the trick, all right? You have to take a look at the number next to x, the coefficient next to x, and the number added at the end of the standard form, all right? What you want are two numbers that multiply to get this number at the end, but when you add them together, you get the number next to x. And it's really important you pay attention to the sign of these numbers also, because that is important as well. And once you figure out the two numbers that work for both of these, those are the two numbers that go in your factored form. All right, so for example, x squared plus 7x plus 12. So we're looking at the positive 12 and the positive 7. So we're thinking of two numbers that multiply to get positive 12, but add to get positive 7. Now there's a lot of different combinations that could possibly work for two numbers that multiply to get to 12, and a lot of different combinations that have two numbers that add to get seven. So if you're not sure which combination works for both, what sometimes helps is to just kind of start listing them out. All right, I'm gonna list out the factors of 12. Let's see, one times 12, two times six, three times four. All right, now do any of these pairs also add up to seven? One plus 12 is 13, that doesn't work. Two plus six is eight, that doesn't work. Three plus four is seven. Okay, so we found our winners. Three and four will work here. All right, so to write this into factored form, we're simply going to do this. Since our numbers are three and four, factored form will be x plus three times x plus four. There it is, there's your factored form. All right, and if you're not sure or you wanna double check, it's super easy. Just multiply this out and find it. x times x is x squared x times 4 is 4x, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 4 is 12, and combine my like terms here, I've got x squared plus 7x plus 12, which is exactly what we started with. Okay, so that's all we're doing here. I'll give you some harder ones because now we're going to start seeing how the negatives affect things. All right, so I've got x squared plus 2x minus 15. Again, I need two numbers that multiply to get, in this case, negative 15, but they add to get positive two. Now it gets a little harder with negative 15 because now when I list my factors, one could be positive and the other could be negative or switched around. For example, one times negative 15 gets me negative 15, but negative one times positive 15 also gets me negative 15, all right? So you can see it kind of doubles our list of possible choices here. 3 times negative 5 gets me negative 15, and negative 3 times positive 5 gets me negative 15, and I believe that's all the whole number options I have. Now, do any of these add up to positive 2? No, 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 yes. Negative 3 plus positive 5 gets me positive 2. I have my winners here, negative 3 and 5. All right, so the factored form would be x minus three, because it's negative three, times x plus five, because that's a positive five. There's your factored form, okay? And once again, if you're not sure, you wanna double check, you can always just multiply this out. x times x is x squared, x times five is five x, negative three times x is negative three x, negative three times five is negative 15, and of course, this simplifies down to 
x squared plus 2x minus 15, which is what we want. And the more times you multiply this out, the more you start to recognize why exactly this little trick works, right? The x's have to add together to get that middle number. So we're trying to find two numbers that add together that get that middle number. And the two numbers on the end multiply together to get that last number, which is why we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to get you that last number. All right. All right, let's do another one. This time, a lot of negatives in here. x squared minus 8x minus 20. So two numbers that multiply to get negative 20, but add to get negative 8. All right, this one's going to be tough. Let's go. 1 times negative 20, or negative 1 times positive 20. 2 times negative 10, or negative 2 times positive 10. Or 4 times negative 5, and negative 5 times positive 4. Oops, I already did that. Positive 5 times negative 4. There we go. OK, so I think I've got every combination that multiplies to get negative 20. Do any of these add to get negative 8? Well, let's see. Negative 19, positive 19. Here it is. 2 plus negative 10 will get me negative 8. Ne uh, 2 plus negative 10. So, we have the numbers that work for both. So let's get this into factored form. x plus 2 times x minus 10. There it is. All right. Let's do one last one. Here we go. We've got x squared minus 7x plus 10. Now, at first, you're probably thinking, oh, positive 10. Well, there's, this should be easy because we don't have to deal with the positives and negatives. Well, wrong, because look. Even though they multiply to get positive 10, they have to add to get negative 7. So it's not going to be a neg it's not going to be two positives um, adding together to get a negative 7. In this case, they're going to be two negative numbers because two negatives multiply to get a positive, multiply to get a positive, and two negatives will add up to a negative. So there's a little trick here. So let's list the factors that will get us positive 10, where both of them are negative, OK? So for example, negative 1 times negative 10, or negative 2 times negative 5. And I believe that's all. Do any of these pairs add up to negative 7? Negative 1 plus negative 10, nope, that's negative 11. Negative 2 plus negative 5, there it is, right there. Negative 2 plus negative 5 will get me negative 7. So we found the combination that works for both of these. So it's going to be negative 2 and negative 5. And notice, I didn't have to list all the positive ones because I knew no, it was not possible for two positive numbers to add up to get negative 7. So I saved myself a bunch of time there. All right, so negative 2 and negative 5, so that means x minus 2 times x minus 5. There it is in factored form, OK? so. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.